Somebody thought it was a good idea. Send out your life and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. A, this is what I was going to end with, but we'll start with it instead. Uh, not this one, but. This one. Yes. Yes. Yep. Oh. There we go. Don't do that. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Whitlow's, you are on mute. It says on mute. Okay. Most, Most merciful, merciful God. God. We, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen.
O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And now we will say together the Venite. Together? Um, together, I will, I, will lead the, uh, I will lead us in saying together the Venite. <laughs> Great, thank you. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Praise the Lord, Lord in, in the beauty, beauty of, of holiness. holiness. Come, Come, let, let us, us worship. worship. Mm. Alleluia. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, Judah became God's sanctuary and Israel his dominion. The sea beheld it and it fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains that you skipped like rams, you little hills like long sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned hard rock into a pool of water and flint stone into a flowing spring. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. A reading from Exodus. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night. No one did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry land, on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on the right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all the Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and the chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. 
As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptian dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed the, in the Lord and in his servant, Moses. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Our canticle is the Song of Moses. With your mics on mute, I invite you to say it with me. I will sing to the Lord for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God and I will praise him. My, the, the God of my people and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army he has hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless depths have overwhelmed them. They sank in the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with the Lord among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretch forth your right hand, the earth has swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them to safety, to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your possession, the resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Praise, Praise to the, the holy Lord, and undivided Lord, Trinity, Trinity, one God, God as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our second reading is from Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, why the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must, must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. And those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. Why those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the living and the dead. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we all stand before the judgment seat for God, of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us 
will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. unmute before I did that and then I couldn't unmute. All right. Yeah. All right, finally. <laughs> All right. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and he could not pay. His Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payments to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. But out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. 
Then he went and threw him into the prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then the Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. So, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So I will share my homily with you about this piece of scripture, and then we will leave um, a few minutes for your responses. Um, but of course, response, responding is, is completely voluntary. Um, nobody will be called on. So today, uh, maybe despite the troubling sort of conclusion of this parable, our gospel, I think the theme I would like to highlight is forgiveness. Peter asks Jesus a question. He asks him, how many times do I have to forgive somebody who sins against me? And he then goes on to suggest a concrete number, a number um, which one commentator I read pointed out um, that that is, well, not only is it typical, one that appears a lot in the Bible, but it's also one that we, because it appears in the Bible, we encounter a lot in our daily lives. There are seven days in the week. Seven is an easy number to count. It's sort of a number we're used to keeping track of. Um, we're used to thinking in terms of how many days in the week are, are there. So, and it's, it's also small enough that we can sort of count, count it. Um, we could, we could imagine, for instance, that say a, a spouse or somebody we live with um, eats our favorite um, breakfast cereal, for instance, um, one that we bought together to eat together uh, six days in a row. And then um, on the last day, the seventh day finishes it entirely before you even get a chance to have a single bite. And so that's an easy enough transgression to track. It's easy to count. Um, and we could imagine that somebody would say, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you seven times. And that would, I guess, be as many times as they had to forgive. Um, and I don't think though that that's really the way that Jesus wants us to understand forgiveness. Because thinking about it that way, which is the way that Peter seems to be thinking about it, is thinking about forgiveness as a quantifiable thing. So, um, in other words, okay, spouse, you ate my cereal seven times, but that was your last chance. Sunday was your last day to transgress against me and no more. That is your absolute last chance, no more forgiveness, and that's it. Sorry. And so thinking about forgiveness in that way does not get to the root of what needs forgiving. The issue between these people who live together is that a boundary was transgressed. That's the true issue. And I think that needs to be named, really before simply allowing one person to seethe, really, and forgive while the other goes on just eating the cereal day after day, thinking it's okay because they've been told it's okay. Um, forgiveness, as Jesus talks about it here, goes beyond our ability to 
count individual instances. The number 77 really could be 777 or 7 million. It's a number that's too big for us to count. It's not a trackable, it's not a trackable quantity, but a quality. And a quality, a quality really, in some ways, by definition almost, if you think in religious terms, kind of depends on our openness to God. So, and this is maybe a sidetrack, but this opening dialogue kind of reminds me of, um, of my, my PE teacher when I was in elementary school. So, um, I remember this really vividly. The kids in my class, I don't quite know how, what grade we were in, probably about fourth, were chit-chatting, interrupting our, our PE teacher, Mr. E., um, as he was trying to describe how to play German dodgeball or something like that. And finally he got fed up and said, you better stop talking now or you'll use up all your words. Someday you'll be in college and you will try to be answering an important question and you won't have any words left. So that's something you should consider. You'll have used them all up when you were interrupting me during gym class in fourth grade. And although I knew that was absurd, that words were not a quantifiable thing that you're born with a certain number of, um, I did pause long enough to start to consider what that might actually mean. Um, what I think it actually was, was that this, the, this way of framing it made me think about the deeper reason why I shouldn't be interrupting somebody while they're talking. Um, it, made me think of the idea of being respectful as a quality rather than rather than just sort of words as a quantity it made it drew my attention to the bigger idea um, through kind of a silly clever frame and i think that's what jesus is doing here with the gospel the parable he tells is pretty jarring in its details um, and in where it ends up. It's not pleasant to be thinking about master and slave dynamics, for one thing, especially um, in light of the Exodus reading we just had, which is so very closely associated with liberation. Um, so some translations use the word servant instead of slave, but I think um, the NRSV is usually the more, more accurate translation. So we have to remember that just as today, um, Jesus lived in a world of really massive inequalities. So with all that aside, I still think it's worth investigating what's going on here. Um, so the slave owes the king 10,000 talents. And it's actually kind of impossible to overstate how much money this would have been at the time. Um, it's really the kind of money that only somebody like Jeff Bezos could pay without blinking an eye. Um, I think one denarii would have been about, uh, no, 6,000 denarii would equal one talent. So we're thinking in, in many, many millions that this, um, that this slave <clears throat> ostensibly owes to the king. Um, and so the king forgives this debt. Um, we have no idea how it was accrued. Maybe this slave used to be uh, an important um, enemy tribal leader, who, who the heck knows? Um, it's not really, doesn't really matter. Um, but when this first slave comes upon somebody who owes him a smaller but still large debt, he demands payments. 
and when the debtor refuses, the first guy throws him in prison, which eventually makes it back to the king. So in a very jarring turn of events, the king then has the first man tortured um, for not showing generosity or forgiveness as he had been shown. Um, so I don't think that the moral of the story is that God tortures people. Um, rather, I think what we're meant to grapple with is the idea that forgiveness is often a long and difficult process. Um, and we would do well to think about situations in which we need forgiveness rather than the ones which we need to forgive. And indeed, I think most situations require uh, forgiveness, that require forgiveness are more complicated than the serial situation that I described at the beginning of this reflection. Because many things that require forgiveness are big systemic things. We may need forgiveness for our participation in systems that perpetuate white supremacy or economic stratification and injustice. We might need forgiveness for, for participation in misogynistic or anti-LGBTQ systems or patterns of thinking or behavior. Um, reparation is a word that's used in relation to the deep and unforgivable kind of sin of, of slavery. And these are not sins that are forgivable by any one person or any single act. It's not as simple as saying, I forgive you, um, and kind of moving on. They require a lot of work. They require internal work, yes, but sometimes, often, they require work that involves systems changing, um, policies changing. They require that we ask God for God's help and believe that God is with us. Um, because we believe that all people are worthy of God's kingdom and God's love. So in that respect, I think it's important that we remember that one of the first things we do in our services of the daily office and what we do right before our Eucharist um, when we're able to have Holy Communion is that we confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We ask God to forgive us for the things we've done and the things we've left undone. We ask forgiveness for not loving our neighbor as ourselves. It is not our neighbor who forgives us here. It's God. And it is also, we know our neighbor turning to God and similarly acknowledging that they are in need of forgiveness, that as human beings, we are all not whole. We're all in need of forgiveness, and Jesus knows this. This doesn't mean that we have to forgive everyone who wrongs us in a simple way. Um, victims of trauma will testify that forgiveness is not something you just do. It's not for the benefit even of the one who wronged you, but for our own sake, for the sake of um, our relationship with God and neighbor. Sometimes forgiveness doesn't even feel like the right word. What's at stake is rather the ability to have a life that includes whatever trauma or traumas that have taken place and still know that you are a child of God, beloved and worthy. What you forgive is not the individual who, who perpetuated the wrong necessarily, but it's an openness to the quality of belovedness and openness to hope and to God. It's an escape from an enslavement to a sin perpetuated against us so that we can feel 
God's presence rather than be beholden to that sin, that evil. So Jesus wants us to know that forgiveness is a process, it's a quality, it goes in ebbs and flows. It's not something we can count, but it is something that we can count on God for, something we can help ask God's help with, something that we keep on doing, asking for forgiveness and being forgiven um, in God. So I want to open it now to your thoughts, if you care to share them. Um, about what forgiveness might mean in your life, um, about how we can attain to justice for sins that are, that are bigger than just us, that are systemic. What is reconciliation? What are forgiveness and hope? And I'm going to put myself on mute and allow a couple of minutes for responses. Well, <laughs> hearing crickets. Forgiveness for me, I, when it's something so big, it has to go to God. When it's so powerful that it just stops everything else in your life, then it seems like it has to go to God. But it's almost like there's the theory for me, and then there's the actual forgiveness. And those don't always meet. <laughs> So there's my prayer, the ideal, but here's the reality of what I'm living. Thank you. We will now continue our service with the Apostles' Creed, led by our designated responder. No, I'm muted. No, you're not. <laughs> I, believe I believe in, in God. One... In, I believe in God. The, the Father, the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and, and the glory, glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver, Deliver us and forgive us, us our, our sins. sins. 
Look upon your congregation. Give, Give to your, to your people, people the blessing, blessing of peace. peace. Declare your glory among the nations. And your and wonders, wonders among, among all peoples. peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never, Never forget, forget the lives of your poor. poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. And, and your, your favor, favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So we sh shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The prayers of the people will be form three. Mary Ellen and Tom will do the responses. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your, your name, name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Taylor, Dee Dee, and Michael, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That, that they, they may, may be faithful, faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That, that there, there may, may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. This morning, Lord, we pray for so many who are hurting, especially remembering 9-11. For all those that every year just relive that pain and suffering, we ask you to just give them peace and talk about forgiveness. That must be an incredible, what a thing, a challenge to face in life. And Lord, we also pray for those that are on a prayer list for Keith, Kathy, Lee, Jamie, and Chris, DG, Linda, Babs, Ellen, Mary Lou, and John, for Randy, Mary, Jenny, Jessica, Joe Gill, and Rebecca, for Meredith, Anya, Lucas, Lansing, Martha, Doug, Joe, for Mimi, Paul, Sally, Rick, Margie, Jackson, for those who are alone, for all refugees and their families, all who are affected by COVID-19, for nurses, doctors, EMTs, and their families, for our ECC brothers and sisters, for Randy, Georgina, Ted, and Pat, Carly, Pat, Ron, Timothy, Marion, Brenda, Ellen, Julie, and Crumpy, and we give thanks for the life of Sadita and any others you wish to add, either silently or aloud. Eric Fleener. For the, people Eric, for the people in California who are having such a horrible time with the fires and the devastation there. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. And our last prayer for an election. 
Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives, that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Peace. God's peace. Um, so, um, as for announcements, um, we will be beginning our book group. Um, which is uh, reading the book by Ibram X. Kendi, How to Be an Anti-Racist, on uh, this Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, so I think for this first session, um, I'm not going to ask if people want to like start looking into the book, that's good, but I think um, we will just talk about what our expectations and norms for the group will be in this first session. Um, so if you don't have the book, that's okay. Um, just, just come and um, we will be um, ready to talk. Um, so again, that's this Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, and, and all are welcome. Um, and we will use the same Zoom room as we used for our Sunday services. Um, what else? Do we have other announcements? We might be able to have a discussion about how to honor Juanita, but we might want to wait until at the end of this to do it. Yeah, let's let's save that for our virtual coffee hour and um, we can chat about that. Um, that'll also be something we will talk about at our vestry meeting, which is this Tuesday mm -hmm. at 2 p.m. Um, so if you would like to weigh in um, further on that, um, all are also welcome to attend our vestry meeting at 2 p.m. And again, um, we will have um, be using the same Zoom meeting room that we use for Sunday services for the vestry meeting. Um, I'm starting to hold drop-in office hours um, from on Tuesdays also from, I think they're 4 to 5.30. So, um, they're, I mean, they're sort of geared towards students, but if that's something that, if you feel like you would like to drop in for off at my office hours on Zoom, um, they will be from Tuesday from four to 5.30. Um, so um, please feel free. Um, and again, it's the same Zoom room that we use for our Sunday services. So when in doubt, come to the church Zoom. <laughs> I just wanted to mention that Lee is about 85% better. The swelling in her leg has gone down almost to normal. <clears throat> she still has a lot of bruising, but it's not painful. And when I got there yesterday to deliver the bulletin, she and her sister-in-law and another lady who I'm not quite sure how she's related, were having a jolly time. So she's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you all and um, anything else we will talk about in coffee hour. So our service will continue with the general Thanksgiving led by our designated responders. Almighty God, creator of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation and preservation and all blessings of this life. But now, but above all, above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. 
for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but with our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered in your name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And may the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who teaches us how to forgive and what it means to be forgiven, uh, who leads us into God's loving arms, uh, be as a blessing this day and in all the days to come in your lives. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our final hymn is Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.
Joan, was that your group?